They are director of the Nordic Council of Ministers Office in Estonia, honorable professors, academics and researchers, government officials and colleagues, dear conference listeners. I am extremely pleased to deliver the opening remarks at today's conference. Migration conferences initiated by the Nordic Council of Ministers have taken place since 2013. The migration conferences, which have already become a tradition, are a good bridge between both the Nordic as well as the Baltic countries, and a good bridge not only between academics, but also between academics and policymakers. In many ways, the year 2020 has been an unexpected one. The COVID-19 virus outbreak has affected the lives of all of us, both professionally and privately. One example of that is also today's conference that takes place digitally. This migration conference, already the eighth, this year justifiably focuses on cross-border mobility in the Nordic Baltic region. It is especially important in today's context to highlight one of the four fundamental freedoms of the European Union, which is the free movement of persons. This is particularly important for us because by enforcing this principle and the Schengen area, which is one of the EU's greatest achievements, we will continue to ensure that our countries are permanently connected and we can act united as is customary in a well-functioning family. As a united Nordic and Baltic family, we must of course support each other and be there for each other in difficult times. Complicated times like the COVID-19 pandemic affected all, us all and unfortunately, it will continue to affect us. This will, of course, have the clearest impact on our cross-border mobility. Together, we must find ways that clearly ensure the protection of the health of all our people, while ensuring also that we enable people to move as freely as possible in the Nordic region and provide people with opportunities in the countries neighboring the Nordic region to have the jobs they like, to live there, to start a family or to do business and to study. We must be ready to find new solutions together that would support our people, the society and the economy. Unrestricted immigration from third countries cannot play a key role in the economic recovery and the creation of the well-being of the society, but also in the potential population decline. Estonia has been at the forefront of unwanted mass immigration as a result of which Estonia has one of the largest population of foreign-born people in the EU, namely 33% of our working age population has a background of foreign origin. Although we have seen strong progress, we are still struggling with the challenges of integration. Immigration must be managed wisely. This way, Estonia is open to people who can and want to promote the Estonian life and who are able to adapt and integrate with our language, culture and traditions. To this end, the state meets the immigrants halfway and supports their journey through adaption and integration programs, the Estonian language and international houses, counselling services and many, many other services. Taking a look at Estonian immigration statistics, we have already recognized for several years that there has been a turn around in immigration at Estonia, meaning that immigration has exceeded emigration. This has been a positive phenomenon for us and most of the immigrants have been returning Estonian citizens. Despite this trend, as the Minister of Population, 
I have made it one of my main focuses to develop the Global Estonian Cooperation. That is, we are working with the Global Estonian Programme to keep more efficiently in touch with our people abroad. We are looking for ways to better engage our communities abroad and ways to attract them to come back to their homeland. Here we certainly have a lot to learn from our good Baltic colleagues. We will certainly also hear at today's conference what the new migration challenges in the Nordic and Baltic countries will be. Given today's global situation, I believe that innovative digital and technological solutions will increase the effectiveness and responding to and resolving various challenges of the future. Here, academia can do a lot in cooperation with policymakers. Finally, I wish you a fruitful conference, exciting discussions and courage to look into the future. Thank you.